So today I'm gonna completely break down the 12 ball puzzle for you. What's up everybody? Thank you for spending a little bit of your time with me today. And if this is your first time here, please subscribe so you don't miss my next video. Alright, so today I'm gonna go over a 12 ball puzzle, which is a very famous viral problem that you probably have heard it at some point in your life. But before we go over that puzzle, let's go over the simpler version so we get a feeling of what we are dealing with. So we're gonna talk about the nine ball puzzle first, and the problem go like this. So somebody give you nine balls, and one of them you know is heavier than the others, but you don't know which one it is. You also have a balance scale, which only tell you which one is heavier, and your job is to identify the heavier ball by using the scale just twice. If you haven't seen this problem before and want to give it a try, you can pause the video now. But if you're ready, here's a solution to this variation of the problem. So you have 9 balls, let's call them ball 1, ball 2, ball 3, all the way to ball 9. So among those 9 balls, you group them into 3 groups. 1, 2, 3 together, 4, 5, 6 together, and 7, 8, 9 together. And the first test that you're going to do is you're going to scale 1, 2, 3 versus 4, 5, 6. And there are 3 possible results. 1, 2, 3 is heavier. 4, 5, 6 is heavier, or they have the same weight. If 1, 2, 3 is heavier, then ball 1, 2, 3 contain the heavier ball. Likewise for 4, 5, 6, if 4, 5, 6 is heavier, then 4, 5, 6 will contain the heavier ball. But if they're of the same weight, then 1 through 6 doesn't have any heavier ball. So 7, 8, 9 must have a heavier ball. So in any case, from 9 ball, you rule down to just 3 balls. Then among the 3 suspicious balls, you pick two and scale them, but if they are the same weight, the remaining one that you didn't test will be the heavier ball and And with that scheme, you can always, always identify the heavier ball by using the scale only twice. Alright, so that's basically the solution of this um, variation. But before we move on to the harder version, let's use this one as an example so we can analyze what's going on in this solution a little bit. In particular, I want to discuss two numbers associated to this problem. Those two numbers, I'm gonna call them the number of outcomes and the number of answers. Let's look at the number of answers first. So think of it this way, somebody give you nine balls and ask you to identify the heavier ball. At the end, you want to pick up the ball and tell him, right, that this is the heavier ball. With that, how many choices do you have? Well, nine choices, right, because you can say, Ball 1 is a heavier ball, ball 2 is a heavier ball, ball 3 is, ball 4 is, all the way to ball 9 is. So at the end of the game, you have 9 choices to announce what you think is the heavier ball. Alright, and how do we pick which choices or which ball will you announce that that one will be heavier? You look at the result from the scale, right? And I'm gonna call that outcome. Alright, so basically you look at the outcome and decide what is your answer. If your outcome change from one to other, you change your answer as well. So with that in mind, one of the most important key that we will be using over and over is this. We want to see the number of outcomes more than or equal to the number of answers. Because we want to be certain, we want to be like, if I see this outcome, there's only one possible answer to this outcome. If somehow you have more answers than outcome, then eventually you're gonna have two answers associated to the same outcome. So it's going to be like you use a scale twice and after you use scale twice, you say, okay, the heavier ball is either ball one or ball two. So you don't know. So you're not certain and you don't want that to happen. So to avoid that, what you want all the time is the number of outcome should be more than or equal to the number of answers. So let's look back at the nine ball problem. We already know there are nine possible answers. How about the number of outcomes? Well, first use of the scale, there are three possible results, right? You can have the left one heavier, the right one heavier, or they have the same weight. So there are three possible results for the first scale. There are also three possible results for the first scale. So you multiply, you get nine possible outcomes at the end. So we have nine outcomes, we have nine answers. That works because you can match them perfectly. All right, so that's something that you use to analyze the problem. And the second thing that I want to mention before we move on to the 12 ball problem is strategy. So the strategy that I just explained it to you for the nine ball problem is very nice. And let me explain why. 
So let's talk about different strategy. So remember, in the original strategy, the first use of scale, you do 1, 2, 3 versus 4, 5, 6. Let's say that the first use of scale, you do 1, 2 versus 3, 4 instead. If 1, 2 is heavier, then you conclude that it's either 1 or 2. If 3, 4 heavier, you conclude that it's either 3 or 4. If they're the same, you conclude that it's either 5, 6, 7, 8, or 9. Alright, and you see the problem here. Among three possible results from the first scale, the first result, you can have two possible answers. The second result, you can have two possible answers. And the last result, you have five possible answers. So this is problematic because your answer does not distribute evenly among the results. So why is that bad? Well, let's look at the last case. Let's look at the case when 1, 2 the same as 3, 4. So we conclude that it's either 5, 6, 7, 8, or 9. So we have five choices. But how many outcomes are there that associated to the last case? In the last case, you use a scale once already. So you have one more use of the scale. So are three possible outcomes associated to the last case. But there are five possible answers left. So you have three outcomes versus five answers. So that's bad. You cannot always identify the heavy ball if you're in the last case. All right, to summarize the last point, Whenever we want to use a scale, make sure that the possible answer distribute evenly among the choices. And if you want to really make sure that it works, you can use the outcome versus answer to verify that your choice is still valid. All right, with that in mind, let's attack the big ball and let's attack the 12 ball problem. So here's how it works. So you have 12 balls. You know that one ball is either heavier or lighter than the rest. But the tricky part is you don't know if it's heavier or is it lighter. You still have a balance scale. This time you can use the scale three times. We want you to identify the odd ball and also whether the odd ball is heavier or lighter than the rest. So before we come up with the scaling scheme, let's talk about those two numbers that I talked about before first. The number of outcome and the number of answers. Let's talk about number of answer first. Alright, so somebody give you 12 balls and what are possible answer that you give at the end? Well, again, you can say ball 1 is odd, ball 2 is odd, ball 3 is odd, all the way to ball 12, right? But that's not the only question that we ask. We also ask, is heavier or lighter? So possible answer is like this. So you say ball 1 is odd and it's heavier. Or you say ball 1 is odd and it's lighter. Or you say ball 2 is heavier or ball 2 is lighter. 3 heavy, 3 light, all the way to 12 heavy, 12 light. So there are 12 choices for balls. There are 2 choices for light or heavy. So you multiply them, you get 24 possible answers. So let's keep that 24 in your back pocket and let's move on to the number of outcomes. So how many possible outcomes are there? For each use of the scale, you still have 3 choices, right? Whether the left one heavier, the right one heavier, or the, of the same weight. But now you have three use of the scale, so you have three times three times three, so the result is 27. So we have 24 possible answers and 27 possible outcome. The number of outcome more than the number of answers, so we are good. Okay, so let's talk about strategy. The first use of the scale is actually the easiest one, simply because you just heard about like the previous problem, right? So in the previous problem, you have nine balls, and then you divide them into three groups, of the same size. And this one, you might guess that you can use the first scale the same way, right? You have 12 balls, so you can do 4, 4, 4, and then you test the first 4 with the second 4. You test 1, 2, 3, 4 versus 5, 6, 7, 8. Let's see if that works. So if you do 1, 2, 3, 4 versus 5, 6, 7, 8, there are three possible results. You have, you either have 1, 2, 3, 4 heavier, you have 5, 6, 7, 8 heavier, or they're of the same weight. And let's analyze for each case how many possible answers are there. So let's look at the first case. Let's look at the case with one, two, three, four is heavier. So first conclusion you have is the odd ball is among ball one to eight. But you know more than that. You know that one, two, three, four is heavier. So if number one is the odd ball, it's gonna be odd in the way that it's heavier than the rest. It cannot be the case that ball one is lighter. And that's the same for two, three, and four. And the same logic apply to 5, 6, 7, 8 as well. If 5 were to be the oddball, then it has to be lighter than the rest. 
and same for 6, same for 7, same for 8. So in conclusion, if you see 1, 2, 3, 4 heavier than 5, 6, 7, 8, among 24 possible answers, you only have the remaining answers. You have ball 1 heavier, ball 2 heavier, ball 3 heavier, ball 4 heavier, ball 5 lighter, 6 lighter, 7 lighter, or 8 lighter. So among 24, you have 8 choices for the first case. And by exactly the same logic, if you have 5, 6, 7, 8 is heavier than 1, 2, 3, 4, then you have 8 choices as well. And the last case, you have 1, 2, 3, 4, the same as 5, 6, 7, 8. You know that 1 through 8 are all good balls. So the odd ball must be among 9, 10, 11, and 12. So what are possible answers in that case? So you have ball 9 heavier, ball 9 lighter, 10 heavy, 10 light, 11 heavy, 11 light, 12 heavy, and 12 light. There are 8 answers as well if you're in the second case. So this is actually a perfect strategy, right? Because remember that we want to set a scaling scheme so that we distribute the number of answers evenly among all the choices. We start with 24 answers. We would hope that after we use the first scale, we distribute answer to 8, 8, and 8. And we did exactly that, right? So the first scale is good. Here's actually the hard part of the problem. How do you do the second scale? Let's look at the first case first when you have 1, 2, 3, 4 is heavier than 5, 6, 7, 8. So you have 8 balls in question. And how do you set the scale? Let's try something because at some point you're going to have to do this problem by trial and error. Right? So you have 1, 2, 3, 4 heavier than 5, 6, 7. So let's try to scale 1, 2 versus 3, 4. If 1, 2 is heavier, then among 1, 2, 3, 4, there's an odd ball. But remember, if 1, 2, 3, or 4 is odd, then it must be heavy, all right? So we conclude that it's either 1 heavy or 2 heavy. 3, 4 are good, all right? If 3, 4 is heavier, then the same logic apply. 3, 4 are heavy. Last but not least, if 1, 2, and 3, 4 are of the same weight, then the odd ball is going to be among 5, 6, 7, 8. Can only be light, so we have 4 choices there. Alright, so here's the result if we use a scale this way. Among 8 possible answers, we distribute answer to 2, 4, and 2. So this is not ideal, right? If you have 8 and you want to divide to 3 group, you would hold for 3, 3, 2. 3, 2, 3 somehow. 2, 4, 2. It's not as even as we would hope. We can look at the potentially problematic case when we have 4 choices and how many outcomes that associate to this case. So after this one, we use the scale twice already. So we have one more use of the scale. So we have three possible outcome versus four possible answers, which is bad, right? So one, two versus three, four is a bad scaling scheme because it does not distribute the answer evenly among all the choices. So what should we do? And to me, this might be the most fun part to this problem to think about. So you start with eight ball, either one, two, three, four heavy or five, six, seven, eight light. How do you come up with a scaling scheme so the answer distributes like 332? If you like, pause the video right here and give it some thought. But if you're ready, here we go. So we're actually gonna modify 1, 2 versus 3, 4 a little bit. We want to incorporate 5, 6 in there. So we're gonna do 1 through 5 versus 3, 4, 6. And you can check that if 1, 2, 5 is heavier than 3, 4, 6, then it's either 1 heavy, 2 heavy, 5 cannot be heavy, so we skip that. Or 3 cannot be light, so we skip that. 4 cannot be light, so we skip that. 6 is light, so it's either 1 heavy, 2 heavy, or 6 light. And the same for the third case, if 3, 4, 6 is heavier, so it's either 3 heavy, 4 heavy, or 5 light. If they are of the same weight, then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 are all good balls, so the odd ball is going to be among 7 or 8. So in conclusion, if you're in the first case, which means 1 through 5 is heavier, we have 3 possible answers. If you're in the last case, where 3, 4, 6 is heavier, we have 3 possible answers. If they're of the same weight, there are 2 possible answers. So there are 3, 2, 3. So this scaling scheme is really good. And in any case, last step is easy. If you have just 2 balls, either 7 or 8 light, you just do 7 versus 8, whatever lighter is going to be the odd ball. If you're in the first case, like 1 heavy, 2 heavy, or 6 light, we just do 1 versus 2. If one of them is heavier, then the heavier one is going to be the odd ball. It's heavy. If they're all the same weight, the 6 is going to be the odd ball, and it's going to be light. Alright, so are we done with this problem? Well, not really. We are like one third done. Right? Remember when we do the first scale, when we do 1, 2, 3, 4 versus 5, 6, 7, 8, 
we have three possible choices either 1, 2, 3, 4 behavior, 5, 6, 7, 8 behavior, or they are the same weight. And what we just analyzed is just one case among those three. But in fact, if you think about it, the case you have 5, 6, 7, 8 is heavier is exactly the same as the first case, right? Use the same logic and apply to the case where 5, 6, 7, 8 is heavier than 1, 2, 3, 4. So when I say we are one third done, we are actually two thirds done. What we have left is um, the case where 1, 2, 3, 4, the same as 5, 6, 7, 8. So the oddball is among 9, 10, 11, 12. Alright, and here's another fun part. So I encourage you to pause the video here again and try to come up with the way to scale the last four balls so you have the answer distributed like 3, 3, 2. And let me tell you that this one is tricky. But if you're ready, here we go. So the way that we're gonna do is a little unconventional. So we're gonna do 9, 10 versus 11 and 1. Why 1? Right? Why do you put one ball there? We, we put one ball there because we want to see 3, 3, 2 somehow. If you don't put one ball there, it's gonna be 2, 2, 4 all the time. Like no matter what you do, which is annoying. So we're gonna put the ball that we know for sure is good. In this case, one is good, so we put one there. So if you do 9, 10 versus 11 and 1, if 9, 10 is heavier, then it's either 9 heavy, 10 heavy, or 11 light. If the scale goes the other way, it's gonna be either 9 light, 10 light, or 11 heavy. If they're all the same way, then 12 is gonna be the odd ball, but you don't know which way is odd. You don't know whether it's heavier or lighter. So to summarize, the first case we have three answers, the second case you have two answers, and the last case you have three answers. And again, the last scale is pretty easy. And now we are done. In all the cases, we just use a scale three times, and in all the cases, we will be able to identify which ball is odd and which way is odd. Alright, and that's all I plan to tell you today. That's not the end of this video though. I want to leave a homework problem to you. So 12 balls, there are 24 possible answers, right? Because each ball can be either heavier or lighter. What if we change the number of balls to 13 balls? If we have 13 balls, we have 26 possible answers. If we are allowed to use scale three times, we still have 27 possible outcomes. So 27 is still more than 26. So here's my question to you. Is there a way to use the scale three times to identify the odd ball and which way is odd for the 13 ball problem? Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. And that's really all I want to talk about today. If you have any more questions or if you know any variation to balls and scale problem that you want me to talk about, leave it in the comment down below. If you find this video helpful and you really like this video, please leave a like to this video. YouTube algorithm really reward video have a lot of like. If you like my video, then other people will see this video too. But the best way to help me is to share this video to your social media, either Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I really appreciate Alright, and as always, thank you for watching. My name is Kuang and you're watching n K. Peace! Alright, so a little bit of story time behind my experience toward this problem. When I see this problem for the first time, I feel like this is such an annoying problem. Basically, you just attack this problem by trial and error. You keep coming with the new scheme and if it doesn't work, then you scrap everything out and you restart again, right? Eventually, you're gonna draw a big tree diagram and like, okay, if this one heavier, if this, if this one lighter, what do you do, what do you do? And, and you just need to make sure that you have one answer for each cases, right? If it doesn't work, then you retry. If it doesn't work, you retry. So to me, back then, which was like 12 years ago, I guess, this problem doesn't require like brain cell. You just keep doing and it will work eventually. It's not until recently that I was like, actually, if you do smart, you don't have to do by trial and error. That's a systematic way to do it. And that's what I'm going to talk about today.